What's up, Pro Guide Spam? I'm Cody, and today we're going over five drop spots that you can use to gain points in arena and tournament. Now, you might remember we did a video that went over a few when season five was first released. You all seemed to like it, but now that we're about halfway through the season and changes were made to the meta, we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to discuss drop spots again. We're gonna include a mix of low key spots and some that require a bit of fighting. So, no matter what your play style is, there is something for you in this video. Starting off, if you forgot about Craggy Cliffs, well, it might be a time to pay it another visit. Craggy's relatively quiet for a major POI, yet it still has about 20 potential chests and an abundance of materials, making it great for those who want to get into a few early game fights, but still want the amenities that can help set them up for a late game. Speaking of, there are a ton of fishing spots to the north, and what makes fishing here even better now is that Epic finally disabled the IO guards in Arena. Yes, we know plenty of you absolutely despise those guards being everywhere. So now they have been kicked to the curb. You can actually grab some fish without getting aimbotted by NPCs while music blares. God, that was freaking annoying. But when choosing a landing spot, you have a couple of options. First, the restaurant. Reason being those absolutely magnificent slurp kegs. There are seven in the attic area and three on the first floor, meaning you and even your teammates can get full shields for free as long as you secure the restaurant. Two chests spawn right beneath the roof, one in the front and one in the back. So if you want to secure that sweet slurp, land on the back side, break for the chest if you hear it, and if not, just drop and enter the attic. The restaurant's roof is one of the high points in Craggy, so once you've done looting, if you're in duos or trios, having one player scout on the roof isn't a bad idea as you get a really great view of where most players are. The other landing choice that stands out in Craggy is the White House on the southwest side. Well, that and the house next to it. Each of them has three potential chest spawns and even some safe spawns, which you might be able to hit up for extra gold to use for upgrading weapons, or buying Esther heals from the two NPCs that can spawn there. So for loot, these are the houses you want to land on. But for consistent shields, the restaurant is where it is at. And that's pretty much it for Craggy. Overall, one of the more underrated spots in our opinion. So pay it a visit and let us know how it goes. This next spot is one of our favorites. But before we get into it, if you're looking to take a big leap and rapidly improve at Fortnite, coaching can help you get there and Pro Guides makes it easy to connect you with the pros. Check us out at the link in the description whenever you're ready. Alrighty then, next is probably one of the most slept on locations in the game right now, Sharky Shell. Sharky Shell is seriously just a dense location filled with substantial loot, mats and fishing spots, and even free shields. You could probably bring a trio here and there'd still be plenty of loot. Being densely packed is such a good thing too because you don't waste too much time running around. You're nearly always getting a chest or farming mats so you get outstanding value without having to do too much. And that can end up with a really beneficial thing, especially when the zone spawns really, really far. But there are two points where you should consider landing either by the slurp kegs on the top side of the prison or by the slurp on the bottom side. We find the one on the bottom side works best since you can usually land there sooner and gain a bit more ground that way. But pretty much every chest is nearby to one another, so you can just go from one to the next. Just don't forget to harvest for mats, break stuff for gold bars, and get the produce box in the corner room for hopefully peppers and mushrooms. We believe that one of the reasons people immediately dismiss this location is because it's tucked all the way in the corner of the map. In reality though, rotating out isn't as bad as it seems. There's always a boat available, so even if the zone is far, you don't have a problem getting there unless you get into a late fight. But you probably won't be doing much fighting anyhow because again, hardly anyone lands here. I will say that players from Coral Cove do push sometimes, but that's typically the more popular spot anyway. So you can usually leverage that advantage and go third party for free kills when you see a fight going on. The shark has been one of our most favorite spots so far this season. Let us know in the comments below what your favorites of season five have been and let's get into the next location. 
All right, the next spot is Steamy Stacks, which honestly deserves way more attention given how much it has going for it. For one, there's plenty of loot, even for trios. So getting a good tier loadout usually isn't an issue. As for where to land, the main building on the west half has the most loot. So drop low and try to secure that ASAP. Don't even worry about landing on the roof for a weapon unless it is something sweet. Just head in through the front entrance, or if you're trying to split it with a duo or trio, one player can take the door and another can glide into one of the windows to land on the second floor. But basically, you're gonna loot this entire building floor by floor. Make sure you check every room for ground loot and don't forget about the potential safe spawns on the second floor. One in a small room to the right and one in the little office area. You can use this gold to hit up Bullseye for an AR or just save it for upgrades. When you're done with the building, loot the others if you can, but be ready to fight. For that, watch the top of the stacks, since players love to camp up there and beam with rifles. You or a teammate can get up there if you want, but in solos, stick to looting and farming for the most part since those objectives typically help more. And on your way out, Steamy has excellent rotation options. The zip lines can take you all the way towards retail, and the stacks can take you anywhere in the top right corner of the map. So if you're feeling aggressive, good news. You can use the stacks to hunt for players near the orchard or those houses to the north. Or you can take the zip line, head to dirty docks, and surprise attack whoever's there. There's also a slurp truck on the road to the west. So just remember, save potions and hit that on your way out. Overall, land at Steamy for top tier loot and rotations. Sure, it's usually contested by a team or two, but if you're willing to duke it out, Steamy's a really, really good spot. Okay, so the next spot is Caddy Corner. While Caddy's not the grand location it used to be, it's turned into a mostly quiet, reliable drop for its good loot, variety of materials, and even a couple of other special reasons. The first one being Kit. Kit offers quests, bounties, and upgrades, which is massive. And you can even duel him for a purple AK too. If you don't know, not every NPC upgrades weapons, but Kit is one of the few who can, and he always spawns in the same spot. So even though there aren't that many chests at Caddy, you can usually muster up some gold for an upgrade to improve your loadout. But the second reason is peppers. Ever since the shockwaves got removed from the game, mobility choices have been limited. Most people just fill that hole with a sniper now. But from people who don't usually snipe, peppers are honestly a great replacement. Sure, they're nowhere near the strength shockwaves were, but they're honestly still sort of underused. Like, not even just for rotations in the end game, but for fighting too. The speed effect is just so useful to have in fights. It lets you bring the heat to the enemies at a pace they're just not used to. They're more powerful than you probably think. And produce boxes are littered all over Caddy, so you can always find at least several to carry or just pop to make your looting more convenient. Not to mention all the mushrooms and stuff too, which are free shields. I mean, who wouldn't want that? If you want to drop at Caddy though, you need to watch out for players at the weather station. The strategy of landing at the weather station, then pushing Caddy, has pretty much been around forever so you really need to be mindful of people landing there. One thing you can do is take an early bounty from Kit so that it hopefully marks whoever landed at Weather Station. Either way, as long as you can loot really quickly, you should be able to get out with a pepper and then loot all the chests along the west underneath the river and stuff. So yeah, if you like free weapons, free shields, upgrades, and peppers, all within a small and easy to loot location, give Caddy a try in your next game. For those that really like getting into quick action, but don't want to rely on RNG to survive, unlike some locations, you should give Risky Reels a go. Risky's a nice balance between hot and chill, and the fact that it's in the center of the map makes it so nice. You barely have to rotate. We've been landing here ever since they got rid of the IO guards that used to spawn right in the center, and it feels so nice now that they're gone. Now, when you're landing, the big screen isn't bad to drop on if you see a chest or good floor loot. But personally, we like the building on the east as our landing spot, since there's an ice freezer that can sometimes give you two slurp fish if you're lucky. So you're always really good to get shields or just even floppers to use right away. 
Now, most of the time, there's only like one person that lands with you. But the good thing is that Risky's pretty small, so keeping track of opponents isn't too difficult as long as you watch where they land and try to keep an eye on what they're doing. And whenever you're ready to strike, one tip we can give is to navigate outside of Risky. Running through the middle at them usually gives you away in an instant. But if you go around, you can generally be a bit sneakier and attack unsuspectingly. What we love about Risky the most though, is that you have so much freedom in where to go once you're done looting. To the east, there's the Coliseum. To the west, it's tilted. And most of the time, you can loot Risky, start grabbing those zero point rocks, and head to wherever you want to engage in the fights. And 99% of the time, they're busy fighting or finishing a fight. So you can just roll in and attack with a nice opening to gain a huge advantage right away. So yeah, the IO guards are gone now. And Risky is good again. There can sometimes be a lot of hectic action, not often, but for the most part, it's quiet and excellent for anyone who likes to roam around and look for fights to third party. The drop is arguably the most important part of the entire game. So finding the best one for you is a must if you're looking to improve. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you found the perfect landing spots. If you did, leave a thumbs up on the video and we do drop spot videos often. So if you want more, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hope you have a wonderful day. Good luck grinding and I'll see ya on the next one. Boom! Peace out.